Okay, moving on to the next team in the ACC that we will be going over, and that will be the team that I've projected to come in ninth place, and that would be the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets led by Josh Pastner. And it's funny because I remember when Josh Pastner got hired by Georgia Tech. I remember saying to myself, wow, that's really the best move they made. I wasn't the biggest Josh Pastner fan at Memphis, and I really didn't believe that he deserved a second chance at a big Power 5 school like Georgia Tech. But his first year, he was very good. He led Georgia Tech all the way to the NIT championship. If you remember the buzzer beater they hit against Clemson, one of the more famous shots in the history of Georgia Tech basketball. But really, since that game, they really haven't held up their end of the bargain when you compare it to expectations. And I do think this year is the first time in a while Georgia Tech basketball fans are kind of feeling some of that optimism because last year, if you remember, before the season started, Georgia Tech was actually deemed ineligible to go to the NCAA tournament because of Wendell Carter and the assistant coach. It was a BS, no, it was a nonsense, nonsense reason. And I remember feeling really bad for Georgia Tech when I was doing the ACC preview on this show last year because I actually felt that Georgia Tech had a chance to be a sweeper in last year's ACC. If you remember, last year's ACC was really down compared to your father's ACC of most years. And I do think that when you look at this year's ACC, the league is going to be significantly better because not only could you make the argument that Georgia Tech is going to be a little better with Alvarado, DeVoe, Usher, all of those other guys improving in their second year in the system, maybe even more for that matter. But at the same time, I think teams like Syracuse, NC State, Miami, Clemson, Virginia Tech, um, Boston College, Pitt, all of those teams, I think you could make the argument, got better as well. And I feel like that's going to be the challenge for this Georgia Tech team. I feel confident in saying that with the talent that they bring back, they could be better than most people expect. But at the same time, I do think the same thing could be said about some of the other teams in the ACC that I just mentioned. So with that being said, that's why I have Georgia Tech finishing in ninth. Now, they do lose a little bit from last year's squad that somehow, some way finished in fifth place overall in the ACC. And once again, they were deemed ineligible to play in the NCAA tournament. But at the same time, when you look at it, that was one of the better seasons Georgia Tech basketball has had in a really long time. And I do think maybe you could provide and build from that optimism. Jose Alvarado and Mike DeVoe is a one-two combination of stars that, to be honest, most Georgia Tech fans, they never thought they've had that again since Chris Bosch and some of the other marquee players in the history of Georgia Tech basketball. But I do think Alvarado and DeVoe is a really good one-two punch. And then you combine that with Moses Wright in the front court, who averaged 13 points, seven rebounds, and about an assist per game last year. I think all of those things combined could make this Georgia Tech team pretty solid. They also bring back a couple transfers. Number one, Jordan Usher. He played last year. He's a redshirt senior. Averaged 8.2 points per game, 4.4 rebounds per game, 2.1 assists per game, about a steal per game last year. And I do think he's going to be one of those guys that I mentioned earlier that with more experience in the Josh Pastner system, he could be better and better and better as the season goes on. They also bring back Bubba Parham, the 5'10 senior former transfer from VMI, he could really shoot it. And I do think that he playing in, once again, another year in Josh Pastner's system, he's going to be more experienced. He's going to, I think, be really molded into that sixth man role for this Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets team. He averaged 5.2 points per game. And I do think this year that number is going to go way up. I think a lot of the bench scoring for Georgia Tech is really going to go through Bubba Parham. And he is one of the more important members of the Yellow Jackets team. They also also bringing Kyle Sturdivant, the transfer from USC, 6'2 guard. He really didn't have that much of an opportunity to play last year for the Trojans. I do think that given the opportunity on this Georgia Tech team, he could be a little bit more successful. I think Josh Pastner realizing that Sturdivant took the opportunity to transfer to his squad from a school like USC where let's face it there's always so much talent and that's one of the programs where you see either a Sturdivant or Charles O'Bannon transfer from just because there's so much talent and they didn't necessarily get a chance to play that much on the floor so I do think Sturdivant is going to get a real opportunity here playing for the Yellow Jackets. Georgia Tech also brings in Rodney Howard the transfer from Georgia he has really good size at 6'10 he's going to get a waiver as will Sturdivant by the way 
away. So both of those guys, even though they are transfers who played college basketball last year, both of those guys are going to get an opportunity to play right away. And I do think there is some potential for this Georgia Tech team. Also bringing back Khaled Moore, former transfer from Clemson. Josh Pastner has done an okay job bringing in the talent. And I do think the talent level on this team, when you compare it to some of the others in the ACC, is it great? No, but at the same time, I can't remember a Georgia Tech team that was bringing in two established stars. Maybe even you could make the argument for three established stars like Alvarado and DeVoe and Moses Wright. And when you look at the rest of the ACC, especially when you consider what Georgia Tech was able to do all of last season, I do think the Yellow Jackets could be right in that mix to maybe make an NIT and maybe, if they, all things go well, make an NCAA tournament. Because to be honest, if this Georgia Tech team doesn't make the NCAA tournament, do you fire Josh Pastner? I think I may have to because when was the last time you looked at a job that no matter how hard of a job it is, if you don't make any NCAA tournaments in five years on the job, I don't care if you want an NIT or not, it's going to be very hard for me to support any claim or argument that you're going to be able to be the coach here long term and succeed in the future. And to be honest, that is one of the main reasons why I'm a little bit worried about this Georgia Tech Yellow Jacket team. But this is a big year, man. We'll see how they do. I think Michael DeVoe is one of the six or seven best players in the ACC. It's really good to see Jose Alvarado back on the floor healthy. I could still remember vividly his freshman year, that devastating wrist injury that he suffered in a game for Georgia Tech, and he's came a long way. He's a very good defender as well, averaging 14.4 points per game, 3.4 rebounds a game, and he's really everything you want from a college basketball senior. I trust in his ability to lead this squad for Josh Pass. So the former Christ the King guard from New York, really looking forward to see what he could do for an encore for his senior season. And I do think uh, Georgia Tech does have a solid eight-man rotation going into the season, which mainly uh, in years past, they haven't really been able to say. So I have the Yellow Jackets coming in ninth. And uh, yeah, I think they're right in that mix in the middle tier with Syracuse, Miami, uh, and all of those other teams. And I'll be curious to see how that middle tier of the ACC ends up.